Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I am your host, Scott Bernstein, Quick Hitter Edition. We're obviously going to uh, touch on the elephant in the room. Jerry Capace today um, rolled out a bombshell headline uh, as the Philadelphia Mafia has shelved, demoted, booted uh, Skinny Joey Merlino from the throne, that he is no longer recognized in the Cosa Nostra. Um, what I'll say is if you're a fan of the OG pod, if you're a fan of mine, uh, if you're someone that respects my reporting and um, respects what we're doing here, and it's been consuming, you know, whether it's my books um, that started to come out in the late 2000s or the stuff that we've been you know, building here with the OG and Gangster Report brand. This is not news, right? This isn't really news to us. So this is, I mean, 99% of this, um, if you've been following us since the winter, we've been laying this out blow by blow. Um, it feels gratifying to finally kind of hear a mentor of mine and Jerry Capace chime in and uh, validate a lot of what I was reporting and obviously adding um, adding context and adding details. So the two things that uh, Jerry differentiated uh, in the reporting that he did today and the stuff that I've been doing over the last, say, eight months, nine months, um, I was intentionally finessing some of the reporting. Uh, I didn't want to make, people were losing their minds over the basics. I didn't want to um, speculate any more than I had to. I wasn't using the terms demoted or shelved or kicked out of LCN um, or alluding to that. I said that they had to restructure that the bosses in New York, specifically uh, Lorenzo with the Gambinos and Barney with the Genovese, uh, and then eventually uh, Mancuso chiming in from prison, that this had become an issue of great concern uh, starting around the holidays of 23. There was a little bit of a delayed reaction. Uh, the, the podcast launched, I believe, September or late August of, of 23, and the the shit didn't really hit the fan until the end of the year. And uh, there were a lot of meetings, and we reported that here. Um, Jerry came at it uh, more from a Gambino angle. We were coming at it more from a West Side angle, the Genovese. Um, and I think you know, both, are, uh, both are true. And um, I'm glad that Jerry could add on some of that narrative, but we definitely have not left Lorenzo Menino's name out of this. Um, we've definitely reported that he's been uh, involved in this as, as much as the West Side guys have, uh, Barney and Patsy and Mickey and Patty. Um, we, we did not have that, we, that Borghese has been going according to Jerry, has been going to meet with Lorenzo and his people on an almost weekly basis, every couple of days, it looks like in some case, in some situations. Um, we were reporting, though, that there were a lot of shuffling back and forth. Um, or mostly, I would say, the Philly guys going to New York uh, for what I was told and how it was described as kind of you know damage control. And then they were able to kind of get things fixed. Uh, uh, Uncle Joe and Georgie and Stevie from Behind Bars. I heard Phil Narducci played a role in it. Anthony Stano um, got everything kind of copacetic and restructured. Again, I did not use the terms shelved or demoted. But that's where we are. And... Uh, so other than the that those, that exact terminology and Borghese going to meet with Menino on a regular basis, those are the kind of the new two the two new pieces. Um, but if you've been following us, we made it very clear that Joey was no longer the boss, that he was no longer the boss because of the podcast, that uh, the New York 
families were very upset by the podcast and that it affected his relationship with both New York as well as uh, guys in his own inner circle, uh, guys in his own Borgata. So I, I will, uh, I want to take this more from a macro than a micro. Um, it's a pretty historic day because it's a, it's kind of official now that it's come from up on high, Jerry Capace. Um, so I guess we can kind of say that the skinny Joey Marlino era in the Philadelphia Mafia went from September, I would say, September 94 to September 2024. And... I think stepping back from it, again, looking at it more from a 30,000 foot viewpoint, speaks to some of the, uh, at least again, my initial impulse in, in my insight here. It speaks to a loss of some autonomy from the Bruno Scarfo group um, that they seem to have had over the last quarter century and then to a degree in in the in the uh before that but it looks like this wasn't necessarily a decision made by philadelphia this was the gambinos and the genovese leveraging them i i i've co i coined the term and i put this in in my reporting on gangster report as well as here that this was a leverage play um where they basically say, until you do what we say, we are putting an embargo on any business that we're going to do with you. And I know there were there were people that, I guess, speculated, like, why would that matter? Like, why would, even saying that they didn't agree with me, but even if that was true, you know, why, why, why is that impactful? And I mean, the fact of the matter is we can debate, sit here and debate where the mafia is in 2024 and how it's not what it was 20 years ago or 50 years ago. But the epicenter of the mafia in the United States goes through New York. Specifically, it goes through Genovese and the Gambinos. And they leveraged Merlino out of the boss's seat. Uh, and replaced him uh, with Georgie Borghese. Another thing that we've been reporting for a while, we actually were reporting that Borghese's been acting boss since around 2019 through 2020. Um, but we also did report that, you know, the new official pecking order, I think we reported this three months ago, that the official uh, new pecking order was Borghese at one now and not like 1B. Um, but Borghese now is the, uh, Georgie Boy is the, is the final say now in everything Philadelphia, uh, LCN, allegedly. And I think for Georgie, uh, this is something that he's always wanted. Um, and now he has it. And I think Georgie, you know, he checks a lot of boxes in terms of what you want in a boss. Uh, he's a student of history. Uh, he's a guy that knows how to politic. He's, a, you know, knows how to thread that needle between, you know, different groups and different factions. So... I think uh, this was kind of a natural order of things, but I, it it's interesting to note how much power it seems that the Philadelphia family seems to have lost in a short period of time, um, the standing to the point where New York could come in and in no uncertain terms, tell them you're doing this and this is how it's going to look. And by the way, uh, I want to see you until this thing gets totally straightened out. I want not a representative, but I want the boss, the new boss, to be coming to New York, uh, you know, on a regular basis to, to um, I don't want to say check in. That's disrespectful to Georgie. Um, but to uh, make sure that everyone's on the same page. So my last kind of, brainstorm here in terms of contextualizing this and, and is that in an era in business around the country, around the globe, where everything's being conglomeratized, 
and then applying it to the world of La Cosa Nostra, it looks like in some ways uh, the Genovese and the Gambinos are asserting more authority over Philadelphia than, yeah, at least in the last quarter century. We know that uh, when Angelo Bruno got assassinated in 1980, everybody then and then after Testa got assassinated in 81, there was a lot of trips to New York and uh, having to consult with the Genovese with who was going to take over. We know that John Stanford kind of got put in by New York. And we know that Merlino and Natalie had to get some type of sanctioning from New York. So it's not unheard of. Uh, it's not like this is, it's just, a. I think it's a little bit different now because you're, you're, um, you're kind of writing out the scorecard and then handing it to people to uh, you know, implement it. And it's not like where the scorecards being handed or we're, we're like the scorecards being filled out, given to New York. New York, New York says, okay. And then you go do it. This is like New York's telling you in some cases, like, this is how I want you to do it. And if you guys want to stay on good terms with us, this is how you'll do it. So it's just interesting. Um, but again, if you've been riding with us, uh, we've been on YouTube now for almost two years. Uh, I, I think this is a good day for us because it just shows you how far ahead of the curve we are here and how if you're following us on OG Pod, if you're following the Gangster Report, if you're going to our Patreon, you're going to be getting things way ahead of, of mainstream press. People in New York, if you've been following us, you knew about this in the winter. You didn't have to wait till the fall. I think that we're, we're in really good shape right now with the brand, and I think this does a really does a lot for us to kind of show that we know what we're talking about here. We're professionals. For people that might not know, I know that people might have just met me in the last year or two in terms of the YouTube space, but I'm not. I didn't just jump on here and, and decide that. Oh, I'm a I'm a mob expert. I've been around for tw almost 20 years. I've written six books. Uh, I've reported on a number of uh, mob trials. I've uh, been a executive producer consultant on dozens of, of TV and film products that you've seen on HBO, Stars, NBC, um, Vice, Netflix. So again, if you don't know that, it's totally fine. I understand it. I mean, we don't know exactly everyone we're, we're seeing pop up on our feeds, but uh, I think my reputation and my, and my, uh, resume speaks from for itself and as we introduce ourselves to the you know the new online crowd and and when we were late to the game you know we didn't jump on the og didn't jump on to the youtube for about you know last two years probably about five six seven eight maybe even ten years late but i think we're doing a good job catching up and if you if you ride with us you're riding with the best there is there's no reason to gloat or do a victory lap you know when steph curry hits 12 threes in a game yeah, he's Steph Curry. So uh, Michael Jordan drops 50. Tom Brady throws five TDs. It's just, you know, that's another day at the office. So, uh, appreciate all the uh, all the support. Please like, subscribe, spread the word about OG Pod. Come back. Please uh, check on uh, the Patreon and the members only. You get the really unique access and uh, a, a different kind of type of reporting than you get on the YouTube. We'll keep giving you the, the great breaking news, uncovering the underworld 24-7. And this will obviously be, this will continue to develop and we'll keep on giving you uh, all the uh, latest updates on what's going on in Philly and New York. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, I'm out.